and we'll end. And that's about how it goes. Everything else is made up and the points don't matter. We're underway. Game three. Miami versus Emerson. Emerson quickly takes possession down the pitch. Miami scrumming. Picked up by Emerson. Emerson grabs possession on defense. It's 0-0. There's a 10-minute seeker floor in Quidditch. That means the seekers cannot seek the snitch until 10 minutes have gone by. For those of you who are bad with vocab, the snitch was that yellow guy who just ran off the field. Ooh, a great pass by Emerson to the ground. But picked up by Emerson on the rebound with a shot, sideways shot, next to the hoop just to keep it company. Picked up by the Emerson chaser. Emerson with interesting jerseys. It looks like they have a skyline on, them, on their jerseys. A lot of tall skyscrapers and buildings. I think meant to denote that they're flying high through the air above cityscapes. Emerson, which I think is located in Massachusetts, probably near a cityscape, would explain the, explain the jerseys. Anyway, back on the, on the pitch, there's a World Cup game going on. Beloff is not on. Misses the shot. Rebound picked up by Miami. An alley-oop to the middle of the field. Waved away at first by the goal ref. It looks like it is no goal. The ref said, oh wait, the ref does say it's a goal. Head ref does say it's a goal. Okay, it is a goal. It's a goal from Miami. They're up 10-0. to 10-0. Emerson Keeper gets beat. Beloff down the left side. He's got numbers. Takes a float around the middle. Misses wide. But great hustle. Chases his own shot. To no avail. It looks like the Emerson Keeper is wearing a headband of some sort. He's got bands that make her dance. His teammate, Chaser, takes a shot right to the University of Miami keeper. Just for fun, a Miami Chaser loses a broom. Maybe distracting the other team. Another great pass to the opposite team's keeper. That is the best strategy in Quidditch. You want to throw the ball directly to the other team to let them score. That is how you win. That's sports in a nutshell. If you take my advice, you'll end up in a sewer. Great beat by the Miami beater on defense. There's no one there. Dunk it. Show me some style, Beloff. Yes! Slams it through the hoop. It is 20 to 0, Miami. There may have been... No, I'd say the Russian judge gives that one a solid 8. It wasn't that much style, but it had panach. Panach. Panesh. I don't know how to say that word. If anyone knows how to say that word, please tell me. Oh, wait. You're online. You can't tell me. You can tweet me. I think we have a Twitter. Hashtag IQA World Cup. I don't know, I actually don't use Twitter. I'm old school. I'm an age 22. Wreck it Ralph, keeper for Miami. Wrecks the shot, throws way too high, but there is a teammate there who picks it up. Gets beat and chucks it. Right to an Emerson chaser, he has numbers. Miami has no beaters. He's chucking towards the rim. He runs, he shoots. He scores. It's 20 to 10 in favor of Miami. It's anyone's ball game. Ralph, wreck it Ralph, passes to the right, over to some quick-footed guy, quick-footed guy, passes back to the middle, tapped away by Thomas. Great defense by Emerson. What you'll see a lot of teams do is they'll position at least one player immediately around the hoop so that if there is a long pass or a shot, it can be deflected or picked away. Of course, with shots like that, you can't deflect those because they're 20 feet too high. Miami picks it up. The U, if you look closely at their jerseys, you probably can't if you're streaming this, but they actually, it looks like a U on their jerseys. It's really a snitch with two wings. They have an orange wing and a green wing, which are the colors of the Miami University. Meanwhile, V, Emerson University. <laughs> Trying to play defense on Balaf. Balaf, Balaf, but through the hoop. Beloff, an agile chaser from Miami. Miami is now leading 30 to 10. It is 30 to 10 Miami. There are five minutes left on our secret floor. For those unfamiliar, the secret floor is the amount of time that seekers have to wait before they can go seek the snitch. And if you don't understand any of the words I'm saying, a dictionary will not help. This game is kind of ridiculous. A lot of beater action on the left side of the pitch. 
Beaters running at each other. It's a great strategy as a beater to try to go for another beater when the ball is off pitch or not much is going on in the game. It's a good time to regain possession of both, both bludgers. There are three bludgers in the game for four beaters. So it's of advantage to your team to have two bludgers at any given time. Advantage awarded to Miami. Looks like there was a penalty. Ball goes behind the hoop. Still, Miami in possession, making a charge and beat with the pass, with the shot, with another pass. To another shot, to another pass, to another shot. No ruling yet by the ref. And a yellow card on Emerson. It looks like for a push in the back. You are not allowed to contact someone illegally in the back in Quidditch. Unless they really like you. No, even so, you can't do that on the pitch. It looks like the goal was waved away. It looks like the goal was waved away until we get notice from the head ref. It was, however, a yellow card on the Emerson Chaser. Though the goal was good. The signal is the goal was good, so Miami is now up 40 to 10. Ordinarily on a yellow card, a player has to go to the penalty box for a minute or until the other team scores, whichever comes, whichever comes first. In that case, Miami scored, so there is no penalty time. Emerson. Passes to Lake. Lake passes to Palmer. Oh, that's an interesting last name. There's a great tradition in Quidditch of creative names on jerseys and numbers on jerseys. I've seen everything ranging from pi to infinity to negative numbers to fractions. Some teams opt for the more standard last name and number. Although, I wonder if Beloff were his first name. That would be a great first name, Beloff. Or maybe it's Beloff. Either way, Miami misses the shot. Emerson takes possession. Emerson's still down 30 points. Quidditch is a great great sport for the vocal cords, especially for me because I'm talking to you all, but also for refs because they get to yell at players and players who should not yell at refs, yell at each other. Everything's made up. Fans get to yell things. And it looks like another yellow card for Emerson. Like soccer, two yellow cards equals a red. So if a player commits two fouls in one game, they are kicked out with an additional penalty of two minutes. Miami on the power play. All right, after a little delay, we're back in action. Emerson passes to another Emerson. Girl Emerson passes to headband, headband. Headband back to dreadlocks, dreadlocks. Might need a headband. Maybe that's why they recruited him for the team. Gets beat, passes back to headband. Headband starts out where he was, minus dreadlocks. I guess it was entertaining. It's like most soccer matches to Americans, I think. They think it's just passing in the middle of the field and then nothing happens. But guess what? That just happened. It was a shot by Emerson that went wide. It was scintillating. I was on the edge of my seat. Even though I'm standing on the grass. Here comes Miami the other way. They have numbers. They have people. And down goes Frazier. No, down goes Miami. He hits the deck. Ball goes back to the middle. Wreck it, Ralph. Toying around with the opponents. Where's Pixar when you need him? Ooh, with an interesting shot and a swat. Shot is just swat with an H and an O. And no A. And another yellow card for Emerson. They're in trouble. There's been a lot of pushing. A little bit of a nitpicky game today for both teams. Oh, it looks like no. A yellow card awarded to Miami for a push in the back. Miami and Emerson were running side by side. No love lost amongst friends. It's a friendly little jostle. Fans think they can't do that, but anything's possible in Quidditch. It's a magical sport. Headband. Over to Headbeard. Headbeard. 
Runs up the right, looks for headband. Headband is there. Takes a shot midair, shoots, and scores. It's a goal for Emerson. It's 40 to 20. It looks like someone's on the ground. Quidditch is a tough sport. It is full contact. There is tackling, as you've seen. There is body checking. There is no tripping. And it looks like someone hit the turf. Anyway, he's up. Let's give him a round of applause. Always good enough to see someone injured. Yeah, I can hear you at home. Thank you for applauding. Okay, Miami with possession of the Quaffle. Wreck-It Ralph looking to pull it out of snitch range. 40 to 20. 40 to 20 Miami. Baloff skips karaoke's, does a chicken dance. And it's a goal. The U with another score. Emerson looking for a quick rebound, a quick attack. There's only one beater back for the U. The U named after a female sheep. Passes and a great, no, it's a score. So what you saw there was the chaser tried to block the ball through the hoops, but chasers cannot block through the hoop. Only the keeper can, which is why it was a goal for Emerson, bringing them back to within 20. It's 50 to 30, the U. The U versus the E, which the E standing for Emerson, of course, not was popular in clubs. Quaffle floating around in the middle of the pitch, picked up by headband, 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 headband with bands to make her dance with a jersey pull, a shot, a score, and a foul. The chaser for the University of Miami had also pulled the jersey of the Emerson player, which you can't do. If you really like a jersey that much, you should buy it online from Adidas. But it is a goal for Emerson. They pulled to within 10. It's 50 to 40. And a yellow card on Balaf, who is the jersey puller. I guess another alternative is if you really like the jersey that much, you can trade it after the match, like soccer. I have seen that happen in Quidditch. In fact, last year, back in the day when I was a player, last year, the French national Quidditch team competed, or rather the Paris Quidditch team competed in the World Cup. We happened to play them. After the game, we exchanged jerseys. And I have to say, French material is definitely better than American material which I guess would be made in China anyway. That's true American material. And this is original material, as you can tell, because I'm not funny. Looks like players are dancing on the pitch. Swatting imaginary flies around their head. Those pesky invisible flies are the worst in Quidditch. That's why we have invisible bug repellent. I always wondered, if you smell really, really bad, does that attract flies or repel them? Post your answer online, even though I can't see it. The fans are tired of the dance-off. Want to see some Quidditch? As do I. Actually, I just want to hear Quidditch and feel Quidditch. I want to be the Quidditch. It's very meditative. It's very zen. It's like if I closed my eyes right now, I could feel myself inside of the quaffle being thrown through a hoop. It's like... That's the sound a quaffle makes. If you disagree, post yours online for me not to hear. Okay, looks like we're about to get back underway. After much debate and discussion, we have a new justice elected to the Supreme Court. Oh no, wait, no, they want to dance off again. They stick one hand out. They stick another hand out. They shake it all about. The chaser for Emerson doing his best Italian parking spot impression. 
No, I want to park there. No, you park there. Why are both our cars in the same spot? Why are they so small? You come to me on my daughter's wedding day and take away my quaffle. You come to me on my daughter's wedding day. Actually, that sounded like an old Jewish man. Which I am. I'm retired. I'm over the hill. I should live in Florida. Coincidentally, that's where World Cup was last year. That's why I retired and became over the hill. Well, somehow it seems like Emerson's marching down the pitch in a slow procession. I wonder whose funeral it is. All right. Regardless, we're back in action. The U has the ball. It's 50 to 40 in favor of Miami. It's anyone's game. For those just joining, you are probably very confused. Here's what's going on. The snitch is worth 30 points. The snitch, if caught, ends the game. The team that catches the snitch gets the 30 points, meaning that if either team catches the snitch right now, they would win. There are 45 seconds remaining until the seekers can seek the snitch. The snitch is still nowhere to be seen. They're running around somewhere off the pitch. Wreck it, Ralph. Looking to wreak some havoc. Wreck some havoc? That's not a phrase. Wreck it, Ralph. Looking to wreck some havoc. Some havoc. I've coined it. Wreck. The fans, you can hear them in the background ch chanting, wreck, wreck, wreck. Mostly because there was a car crash in the parking lot. Passes back to Edelson, who kindly gives the ball over to Emerson. I'm not sure why. Maybe because her name's Emerson with a D. Passes across. A beautiful pass. Dropped by the Emerson Chaser. Passes to the ground. A Polish sinker. A Polish floater. No, a Polish sinker is when you throw it straight into the ground. If you want a great example of it, watch Miley Cyrus throw out the first pitch at a Tampa Bay Devil Rays game. There's your siren. That means the Seekers may seek. The Seekers are now allowed to seek the snitch. And because the game is still within 10 points, whichever team catches the snitch will win. Headband. Looking to make a charge. Charges. Falls. On the ground. Taken away by Miami. A great defensive stop by Miami that is tough when you have a player especially one as big as headband coming at you full bore full bore not meaning a big pig coming at you full bore it's very hard to take them down without them scoring but a great tackling technique everyone's safe took him down to the ground and got possession from Miami preventing a score fans clamoring for yellow card I think they're Popularity ended in 2003 with Ocean Avenue. The U passes it back to the beaters who can't touch the quaffle. The rule in Quidditch is you can only interact with a ball of your type, which means that beaters can only touch bludgers. Chasers can only touch quaffles. Seekers can only touch the snitch. And lovers never quarrel. The U goes down to the ground, upside down. It's almost half of an M. Wessels. Wessels for Emerson, taking it up the pitch. Wessels. Just a great name. It's like a Brussels sprout, but with a W-E. Misses wide, misses high. I guess he didn't sprout up the way we'd expected. And Miami, that's a great chin strap, man. Berger for Miami. I think it's Berger, or maybe it's Burgess. Depends how American you are. Anyway, he passed another dude. Barrios to Berger. Berger with the Panach. Oh, and the style. He scores. Oui, oui. Berger with the score. 60 to 40. Oh, no, I'm Italian again. I lost it. Thomas. 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 Thomas with a good American score. Emerson back within 10. No. Waved away. Waved away by the assistant ref. It looks like he may have been beat beforehand. Okay, waved away. The goal is no good. He was beat before he scored. It's 60 to 40 in favor of Miami. Miami looking to put it at 30 points or ahead. To put their lead at 30 points or ahead. I don't know what it was. Berger, Berger with the rainbow. Rainbow somewhere over it. Goes the ball to an Emerson Chaser. Emerson Chaser does his best go for impression. Popping up from the ground. And here comes Blonde Mohawk, Blonde Mohawk, Blonde Mohawk, shoots, 
to Curly Mohawk. Curly Mohawk shoots. No, back to Blood Mohawk. Mohawk. No good. No good, says the ref. Deflected wide. And it was all for naught. Miami still with a 20 point lead. It's anyone's ball game. It's still within 30 points. Still within 30 points. Miami making a charge. Making a charge. Credit or debit? I don't know. Passes across to Berger. Berger again. Oh, with a beautiful tip. Back to headband. Headband. Charging down the field. No one will stop him. Passes with a beautiful pass to Toms. Toms. Donates his shoes. Loses his footing to the other team. And here comes Berger. Note, I don't speak French. The only French word I know is pomplemousse, which means grapefruit. So were I to try to announce in French, for example, if the Paris team were here this World Cup, all I would do is say pomplemousse, 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 over and over. But I speak English. Oh, number five, Miami takes a shot, swatted away by headband. Great stop by headband. Headband with dreadlocks. I should call him dreadband. Or if he doesn't do music well, maybe a dead band shoots. And dreadlock ponytail looks like he missed. Miami still aching to put it out of reach. It's 60 to 40. It is 60 to 40 in favor of Miami. Still, there has been no scoring for it seems like an eternity since I was a kid in the 1920s. Cohen, Cohen shoots, a priestly score. It's Cohen putting Miami up 30, wait. Wait, the head ref says, let's kill the party. The ref's deliberating. No, no goal. The goal is disall disallowed. He may have been beat before. There may have been some illegal activity, some rough housing, some riff raff. As it stands right now, it is still 60 to 40 Miami. Emerson, dreadband, dreadband, passes across. Over to skinny dude, skinny dude, over to dread ponytail, dreadlock ponytail, dancing. Shrugs one defender, shrugs another defender. I shrug my shoulders because I don't know what's going on. Oh, and a great pass to the Miami keeper. No, to the Miami chaser. Feldman, Feldman from Miami, does his best worm impression and wiggles around on the ground. Ball goes back to Emerson. Emerson with no numbers. Miami has a beater and plenty of chasers to go around. Share some with the class, Miami. Back to Dreadband, Dreadband shoots. It looks like no goal. He missed high. Dreadlock ponytail. It's really a competition of hairstyles here. It's dreadlock ponytail versus dreadband. Who will win? I don't know. Maybe the one guy with the normal hairstyle will score. No, and the snitch is back on the field. The snitch is back. He's running. It looks like the Emerson Seeker is in hot pursuit. But where's the Miami Seeker? There he is. It's power. Okay, it's intense. It's still 60 to 40 Miami. So whichever team catches the snitch will win. Oh, and a great shrug off by the snitch going pound for pound, pound for pound, toe for toe with the Miami seeker. Another stoppage of play. So the rule is, the rule is if there's a stoppage of play on the field while the snitch is back, the snitch also must stop and the seekers must stop. Cohen looking to redeem himself after getting his first goal waved away. Looks like it won't happen. Oh, and a seeker, it looks like the Emerson seeker or chaser is down. So another stoppage of play. It's 60 to 40 Miami. Miami quitting early last World Cup and a heartbreaker to BGSU. This was a crazy game in which I believe BGSU scored an own goal. And on a dramatic snitch snatch, Miami was eliminated, allowing BGSU to have an incredible Cinderella run in a final four berth. Where they were ultimately eliminated by, I believe, the Lost Boys. That may have been the Elite Eight. <clears throat> they were eliminated by, eliminated by the Lost Boys in, I think, what's universally known as the greatest game of World Cup Six, a game that went hours, 
possibly years. We all lost track because we fell asleep in the middle. But a game that went up in the 200s. Most Quidditch games that you see will be around the 100 range. This is fairly normal, a little bit low, 60 to 40 Miami. The snitch, taking a rest on the side of the field, sits with some fans, schmoozes. He's a very social snitch. Not a social butterfly, because those fly too. Maybe he's a snitch or fly. He's a social snitch butterfly. Well, while we're waiting, snitch. Oh, he's back on the field. I was going to go for an in-game interview. Ball kicked away. Miami Seeker in pursuit, shrugged away by the snitch. Miami still looking to score, up 20. Quaffle goes across the field to no one in particular. No one picks it up. Passes to girl, no one in particular. And a grapple, a struggle, ooh, and a vicious neck tackle by the snitch. The snitch, unlike the players, has fewer rules to abide by. The snitch can do pretty much whatever they want to keep the seekers from catching him or her. For example, I've seen snitches get on bikes. They have climbed trees. They've jumped in swimming pools. The longest game that I've ever played happened because the snitch took a nap in a hedge. That's a true story. Emerson scores, bringing it back to within 10. It's 60 to 50. Miami, snitch still not caught yet, wearing one of the seekers' headbands. It looks like he took maybe a Miami seeker headband and stuck it on himself, so Miami had to get a new headband. Maybe it's laundry day. Emerson, arm wrestling. Arm wrestling doesn't win in Quidditch. Oh, and it passed behind the hoop. Body checked by the Emerson keeper. That was close. Quidditch is a game of inches and a game of snitches. You can't spell snitch without inch. Oh, Miami picks it up. It looks like a green field in front of him. Only one beater back for Emerson. A pump fake and a pass across the field. And a score. Miami goes back up 20 points. It's 70 to 50. 70 to 50 Miami. Here comes the Seeger. Oh, dodges a bludger. This is his chance. Moyer has about five seconds to try to make a snitch grab. Oh, and taken down. <laughs> Unintentionally, Trudeau, the Emerson keeper. No, the Emerson Seeger stopped writing Dewsbury comics and took down inadvertently the Miami Seeker. Here comes a new seeker for Emerson. It looks like he has more energy and vigor. Does he caught it? He may have caught the snitch. North Charles for Emerson. It looks good. The ref says it's good. There's your ball game. And they come from behind victory. At one point down 50 points. Emerson takes the win. What are you, 80 to 70? It's an instant classic. Miami trudges home in defeat with another early exit from the World Cup.